All right, today we'll be introducing Newton's third law. We've already learned about the first two, and this is the final of the laws and the final for this unit. It goes like this. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. But what does that really mean? It has something to do with forces, and we're about to go into it right now. You take a look at these two cat faces pushing against each other. The one cat is pushing a certain force this way, but the other cat's face is pushing with an equal force in the opposite direction. That's why we call it the action and reaction forces. Whatever force there is pushing on an object one way, that object pushes back the same amount the other way. Let's dig a little deeper. All right, so forces always occur in pairs. That's important. That means there's always an action force and then an equal but opposite direction reaction force. That's the pair of forces that we're talking about. The important thing to understand is that the size of the force in one direction is going to be the same exact size but pushed back in the other direction. All right? So if you take a look at this picture, you shoot the gun. The gun pushes right out onto the bullet. That's the action force. But the recoil, there's a push back, pushes back by that same amount backwards. And that's what gives you a kick when you shoot a gun. All right, action force and reaction force. Let's do some more examples to get a better idea. Let's think about this like a skateboard. Question, what happens if you're standing on a skateboard or even on a slippery floor and push against the wall? We already know the answer, right? You push against the wall. And you slowly start to go backwards, right, away from the wall. Why? Well, that's because the wall pushed back on your hand with the same amount of force. So if you pushed with 20 newtons of force against the wall, the wall pushed back with 20 newtons of force. Action, reaction force. All right? That's what third law is all about. Why does it hurt when you stub your toe on a rock? Okay? Your toe is throbbing. Ouch, ouch, ouch. But why? Well, the amount of force you put on the rock is the same amount of force that the rock exerts back onto your toe. Therefore, the harder you hit your toe against it, the more force the rock is actually going to put back onto your toe. Obviously, the more force on your toe, the more it hurts. Boom. It's as simple as that. If we look at Newton's third law from the example of the bug splattering onto the windshield, take a look at all these little freckled bug splatters and that. We know when we drive on the highway that happens quite a bit. But what's really happening here? So say this tiny, tiny fly has a mass of 5 grams and it hits a windshield of a moving 1,000 kilogram bus. Okay? The little fly has a tiny mass. The bus has a huge mass. If we think about that, we know that the forces acting on the bug is the same as the bug acting on the bus. According to Newton's third law, the force that the bug pushes on the windshield, the windshield pushes back on the bug. So they're equal. But the question is, why then? Why is the bug splattering even though the windshield's not? See, in this question right here, it said, which will have the most force acting on it? A lot of people think that the windshield has more force acting on the bug. But it's not true. There are equal forces between them. So again, back to my previous question. Why is the bug totally destroyed and the windshield not? Well, that actually has to do more with Newton's second law. Let's look at the answer. Here's a picture of that splattered bug not having a great day. But if you think about it, the bug's mass is very small. The bus's mass is very large. We know, according to Newton's law, that the net force is equal to mass times acceleration. But if both of the forces for the bug and the bus are equal to each other, then something else has to change, and that's where the masses come in. The bug's mass is super small, so therefore it accelerates with a large amount. Now, the bus's mass is super large compared to the bug, so its acceleration is very, very small. Why does it have to be that way? Because these two multiplied together have to equal the same force that these two multiplied together have to equal. Why? Because Newton's third law 
tells us that these guys have to be equal. So the only thing that can change is the t acceleration. Does that make sense? So the bug splatters because of its huge change in acceleration. The bus's acceleration is barely changed at all. You don't even feel it. What about if we're thinking about humans here? Action and reaction forces. When you are falling, say, off this leaning tower of Pisa, all right, obviously gravity, you feel like, pulls you down. So Earth pulls you down, but by the same amount, you pull back up on Earth. So why does it not feel like the Earth rises when you jump? It has to do with Newton's second law again. Your mass is so small compared to the Earth's huge mass. So you accelerate more and Earth does not. So remember, Newton's third law is the action-reaction forces. They're equal. The force that the Earth pulls on you is equal to the force you pull on the Earth. The only reason that they look different is because of our masses create a different acceleration. Again, overlap with third law and second law. Take the action force here. The tire pushes on the road to actually get the school bus to move forward. Okay, so this is our nice big action force. But vice versa, there's a reaction force. The road pushes back onto the tire. Why? Because every force is found in pairs. Every action, there is a reaction force. Newton's third law. Take a rocket in the air. Our reaction force is the fact that high pressure gas, when the fuel burns, pushes against the air and the rocket pushes on forward. But back at that, the rocket pushes back against the gas. Action, reaction forces. Newton's third law says that all forces are found in pairs. Can't forget that. Consider hitting a baseball with a bat. If we call the force applied to the ball by the bat, so the ball hitting the bat and the action force, then the reaction force is just the reverse. It's when the bat hits the ball. So that's the force applied to the bat by the ball. Remember that. Action-reaction forces always include the two same objects that are interacting with each other. Let's take this creepy idea. Say you're on the space station, all right, and your safety line breaks and you start floating away from the shuttle. How would you get back to it if you have nothing to grab onto to pull you back? Let's think about Newton's third law for a second. The answer is maybe a bit strange at first, but anything you'd have on you, on your tool belt, if you threw as hard as you could in the direction away from the shuttle, it could actually get you back to the shuttle. So let's say that here is the shuttle, all right? And here's you. If you threw a tool, all right, let's make a weird wrench. If you threw a tool that way, you're pushing against the tool that way. That's your action force, right? But vice versa, the tool pushes back on you. And that would be the reaction force. So by throwing something into the air, all right, your wrench would fly away from the shuttle, but so you would go in the opposite direction and eventually slowly float back to the shuttle. Why? First of all, Newton's third law says it's about the action reaction forces, and then Newton's second law, the idea that you will accelerate because there's a net force, which will then push you towards the shuttle. Pretty cool, huh, to think about. Kind of scary, too, if you were lost in space as well. Now, this graphic doesn't necessarily work in PDF format, but this truck comes and hits this car and smashes, and then this car bumps a little bit forward. The question is, what of Newton's laws are actually represented? Well, Newton's first law is represented because th this object in motion wants to stay in motion, and this object at rest wants to stay at rest. And when they hit, something strange happens because their motions change. They're acted on by unbalanced forces, and their motion, or state of motion, I should say, changed. This guy slows down, and this guy speeds up. Newton's second law is explained because once this 
hits this guy right here, there's an overall net force. And we know if there's a net force, there's going to be some type of acceleration. So the idea that these guys speed up and slow down all has to do with Newton's second law. And last but not least, what we've learned today about Newton's third law. If this car pushes on the other car, that would be the action force. And the reaction force would be equal but opposite. So the little car would push back on the bigger car as the reaction force. Simple as that. Newton's one, two, three laws, but you really start to see how they all intertwine, which is something you have to remember and be prepared for, not only for your quizzes, but for your big unit test. Thanks for watching. Best of luck. Keep reviewing your Newton's laws and seeing how not only the math, but the theory overlaps in explaining a lot of different things. Thanks for listening.